this is, this is, this is. Welcome to a brand new episode. Happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, if you're celebrating, enjoy it. It's a Tuesday, a Tuesday Halloween session, which is always weird. Um, I'm sure you already did your trick-or-treating over the weekend. I uh, hope it was good. We're just getting back from Indonesia, so uh, I wish us luck, and I hope it all went well. Um, so check it out. 481, we're getting up there. MXPX Find A Way Home is out everywhere right now. If you haven't already added it to your music library, please do. Add it to your library. Like it on your Spotify. Like it. Heart it on your on your uh, Apple Music, your whatever you listen on. What do you listen on? I, it doesn't matter to me what you listen on. Whatever is convenient for you because everybody kind of has different vibes. Don't let the Spotify people tell you, oh, Spotify is the best. Spotify, there's good things about Spotify. There's There's better things about Apple. There's... There's, and, and vice versa. So I feel like Apple has better audio. Tidal has best audio as far as streaming. But Spotify probably has the worst audio of all of the streaming platforms. But it has the best music browsing software or whatever you call it, right? Their algorithm, how they find new music for you, that kind of stuff. So if you're kind of like one of those listeners that likes to always get new songs, always hear new things, that's cool. And, and I think Spotify is better for that. So, I mean, there's there's great things about all of the all of the, the platforms. And the best part about all these platforms is they all have our new album, Find A Way Home. So you can add it no matter where you're listening. Do that. I uh, appreciate you. Um, if you want to call in, um, we today, we're going to get, we're going to take care of some business. Today, we are going to purge, purge the voicemails. Every voicemail that I have that I felt like was good, you know, I don't listen to these voicemails ahead of time, but um, all of them that I haven't already used pretty much are are here. So it, the time has never been better than now to go ahead and call in. The number is 360-830-6660. Call in, leave a, ves- a voicemail, leave me a message, let me know what you want me to know. Let me know what you want everyone else to know, and I'll comment on it. I'll talk about it. If it's a story about MXPX, of course, I'll give my two cents, and I'll go into it. Um, we've had a lot of great episodes the last couple of weeks because of that. Um, it's been it's been awesome. So call in because you're going to be at the top of the heap. That's it. And Shaner, I know you're on this episode. You'll hear him from him in a minute. But <laughs> you can call in too, my friend. You can call in too. Do what you like. I love it. Uh, I love all you guys that call in uh, once, twice, three times. I don't care. Just keep calling. Keep telling us your stories and and asking about things. Um, I love it. All right. I wanted to, I don't usually do like themed episodes, and this is not much of a themed episode, but let me tell you guys a story about Christmas Night of the Living Dead. It's a song that we wrote uh, for Halloween, really. You know, it's a Halloween song, and... It's a song that came out in 2009. We released it 2009, so it's like, what, 14 years old? And we really haven't really done anything with it. We came out on a compilation. Now, I think this is kind of... The reason why I would tell this story is just because it's Halloween-themed. And the idea behind the song, Nightmare, uh, Christmas Night of the Living Dead, is a, is a, is a sort of Nightmare Before Christmas vibe. Um, meaning, not musically, but putting Halloween with Christmas and making that work. Now, I just wrote a punk song and then put Halloween lyrics, but in the snow so that it's Christmassy. And it works. It's great. <laughs> um, you know, we released this on a compilation and the la- you know, the record label, we were on a record label, I think. And I don't know what who, who did this or what, if it was the record label or whatever it was, right? Um we recorded this in Atlanta at Ruby Red Studios. Butch Walker was was the owner of the studios. He didn't record it, though. It was Stefan Edgerton from Descendants. Um, we, we brought him. I think we might have been on. He might have been on tour with us because he, he was our, our uh, guitar, bass tech, and monitor guy for a couple tours. We, you know, when, when before the Descendants got back together and they, they weren't doing anything, he needed. He needed work, so 
we brought him out on tour and he uh we we hired him to you know engineer and produce this song and so this is all stefan stefan did it uh and uh it sounds great it's cool it's it's got this weird just like Wah! when it starts out um but the weird part about this song and and some people might know this already was we titled this song Christmas Night of the Living Dead. And to us, it made sense, like the living dead. That's a zombie, right? But when we saw the title of the song and we weren't allowed, you know, this was like, it's out, it's done. We weren't allowed to like fix it. Um, they didn't send it to us to proof or anything. It was just back in those days, you, you'd you see those typos just already there. Like, boom, like what? So we get this compilation, and it says Christmas Night of Zombies. We're like, what? This isn't the name of the song. Like, listen to the song. Christmas Night of the Living Dead. My face is green. The snow is red. Like, what? Just, you know, those things happen. People just not paying attention. Freudian slip, or I don't know what kind of slip you would call that one, but some kind of slip. Um, somebody call in and, and tell me what kind of slip that is and why it's not a Freudian slip. There's some, there's probably some, uh, psychology majors out there. Um, okay. So anyway, they screwed up the title and it kind of put a bad taste in her mouth ever since it kind of screwed up the song in a lot of ways. It screwed up the promo for the song. It screwed up the, us wanting to tell people, go listen to this because it was the wrong title. And it was a dumb title, Christmas Night of Zombies. Uh, uh, man, it's just it's hard to do business in this world when there's so many morons, and 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 even the smart people, <laughs> and even the people that care, even the people that want to do it right, still make mistakes. Mistakes will be made, and so. It could have been an honest mistake. It could have been like, I swear I put the right thing in there. But to me, this just seemed like, oh, it's rough. It was rough. So let me let me let me let you hear this. At least a little piece of this song. We won't play the whole thing straight through, but let's hear a piece of this song. I'm gonna start on the third verse. There's actually three verses to this, and it's kind of a breakdown verse. And ah, it's my favorite verse. So we're gonna go in right here. the bass line. You turn into a zombie. So uh, that's the song um, at the beginning. Let me let me show you the very beginning. Yeah. All right. So that's that's the beginning, and that's that's the song basically. Um, that's a little story about how things can get messed up and there's not much you can do at that point. You just got to live with it. And in our case, we, we lived with it, but I mean, we just, you know, didn't do much with the song after that, you know? Um, but it's a part of our little history. So there's that. Um, before we get to voicemails, you guys, MXPX shows where we, we just did a bunch, uh, when we were young. Thank you for, for that. I, I assume them recording this before. So, um, I'm sure it went great, <laughs> Indonesia as well. And um, coming up, we got Seattle, Seattle, December 30th at the end of the year at the Showbox with Diesel Boy. It's MXPX and Diesel Boy. It's going to be epic because we get a nice long set, and we're really looking forward to that. That's like our first 
our first non-festival headlining set um, to close out the end of the year. So the end of 2023, and then we uh, we open it up 2024, January 6th, pretty soon. So uh, if you're in Southern California or if you just like to travel, come on down to the Hollywood Palladium, January 6th. It's a Saturday night, MXPX, Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes. Tickets on sale now. Tickets still on sale, and it is going great. But, man, it's not sold out yet. So, please, if you intend to buy, get them. That always helps us out. That helps the podcast out. And uh, we have a bunch of other dates in 2024. Let me rattle these off to you. Um, we're going to be MXPX and the Ataris are playing some shows together. And we kick that off on um, February 9th, February 9th, 2024, at Webster Hall in New York City. And then the next night, Philadelphia, uh, February 10th at Union Transfer. Uh, tickets on sale for both of those shows right now. And then uh, the next month, March 15th, Friday night, Buckhead Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. I know I'm not supposed to, it's not on the list, but it's on this list, but it's not on that list. Atlanta, Georgia, on sale now. So don't don't wait on those tickets. Um, and then the next night, Saturday night in Orlando, Florida, at the House of Blues, March 16th, um, Saturday night. Come on, kick it with us. Uh, I've already sold a bunch of tickets for all these shows, including this show, um, Denver, Colorado, on on April 5th. That's a Friday night. Ogden Theater with the, well, with Five Iron Frenzy and the Ataris. Wow, it's going to be an epic show. It's already, it's already sold, who knows by now. I, I don't want to say too much about it, but it's selling. So don't wait, everyone on all these tickets. And then the the last show I got for you right now is April 6th. We always play April 6th, don't we? It's a Saturday night, The Depot in Salt Lake City, MXPX and the Ataris, finally coming back to Salt Lake City. Uh, I know Bad Cop, Bad Cop isn't with us this time, but the Ataris will be, which is uh, going to be awesome. And I'm, I I know we're going to do something cool. I know we're going to do something cool. So we, we covered a Dwarf song called i'm not going to salt lake city i'm not young and i'm not pretty it's a great song and uh you got to check that out but i think i said this a couple weeks ago if you don't it, only check that out if you haven't already checked out the new album and you're not already daily playing the new album like mxpx challenge right now for you guys is just play the new album once a day if not twice a day and even if it's in the background or whatever you're doing i know you guys are busy i know you got things to do you can't be like just playing albums for bands all day. Like, I get it. But if you think about it, I appreciate it. All right. Uh, that's all at mxpx.com for that info, as well as vinyl, merch, T-shirts. Uh, we got a bunch of really cool stuff coming. So uh, really, really excited. Find A Way Home is is, is available now. So if, if you haven't already got the Insomnia variant or you know, the Nebula or the Galaxy variant. Those are really cool. And, and of course, classic black vinyl. You can never go wrong with that. Um, appreciate you guys. All right, let's get to you. Let's get to your voicemails. Like I said earlier, this is all about all about you, all about purging the older pre-album voicemails. There's a couple in here. And then there's, a, there's some new ones in here too. But, um, and then I'm out. We're fresh out until people call me tomorrow or as this is playing or, or whatever it is i'm sure that more people will call by the time this actual episode airs so let's just get to it let's get right to it let's start with uh with the first one on the on the pile first first one on the heap Good day, mark james going from new south Wales in australia uh bit of a two-parter Firstly, a bit of an apology, and hopefully you guys get a chuckle out of this. When I first got into MXPX was when you guys released Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo, and I was also listening to a bit of, I don't know, um, No Fun at All and Melancholy, and I thought you guys were from Europe as well. So, like I said, hopefully you get a chuckle. Um, out of that, but yeah, a bit of an apology. It's your vocal style, same as the, the guys from Young Colin and the other European bands. They sounded similar, so I put you in the same, in the same boat. But also, and, and, um, more so, a thank you for all the music you guys have done, above and beyond with this new album as well. Absolutely love it. 
um, there is not an MXPX song that I skip that comes up on my playlist. Um, I'm, a, I'm a dad, I've got two little boys. I struggle a little bit, but um, your version of Superman really hits home for me. So, um, above all, all of the other songs, uh, thank you very much for that, Ben. <laughs> I know she's already getting a bit emotional. But, um, yeah, if you guys do get to tour down under again, I will definitely be there. And if I can, I'll even bring my kid. Uh, my sister wants to convert one of my guitar hero guitars to look like your bass. So I'll have to get some paint and order a sticker and do that up for him. But once again, man, thank you to you, Tom. And you for everything, and I'll hopefully yes, see you on the tour very soon. Seems like take care. Bye. All right, you guys. I know that was hard to hear. And thank you for calling in, James. Luckily, I speak Aussie. I, I could understand what he was saying. And uh, he's wanting to know if we're coming back. Are we coming back to Australia? Yes. MXPX is working on coming back to Australia, hopefully 2024. I think it's definitely possible. So keep an eye out for MXPX um, news. But, um, man, let's just get through it. You know, I, I love that your son is getting into playing guitar and wants to have a guitar that looks like my bass and, and you know, put a sticker on there on the on the, the pick guard. That'll look great. It'll look cool. Um, I uh, Buffalo, man, that's that's uh, I remember when we released Buffalo in Australia. It really, it really was huge. It was big. It was like a big push for us there. And we did Warp Tour, and um, yeah, we're just these guys that could be from Europe or Mexico or anywhere, right? Like maybe not Mexico, but uh, you know, looking at Yuri, it's like this is a weird looking Mexican, but <laughs> it, it's probably. Probably not that strange. Um, I take it as a compliment, you know, just, you know, the fact that you put us in the same boat as some of my favorite punk bands, Mill and Colin. I love Mill and Colin. No, no use, uh, uh, no fun at all. They're a band that we toured with. That was our very first tour in Australia. We opened, we supported them and the, sh the shows were great. The band treated us great. They were awesome and great guys and, and still friends to, with them till this day. Whenever we see them, it's like we do like, um, you know, I put my hand on Ingemar's shoulder and he puts his hand on mine, you know. We pat it. <laughs> Whatever that is, like the Indian uh, greeting. Um, we don't actually do that, but I think we should. We should. Uh, <laughs> And then Goldfinger, Superman. Um, I do, for those that don't know, I do a cover of Superman acoustic. I did it over the pandemic, over the lockdowns, and I was just I was just keeping myself busy and working on music and getting emotional. You know, James was saying he was getting emotional uh, thinking about that song, and, and when he listens to that, because he's got kids, and, you know, he doesn't always feel like he does does it right, you know, is living his his. To, 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 to the best of his abilities as a father, as a, as a person, as a human. I mean, I, I'm extrapolating a little bit, but my Aussie to English translation might be a little off, but I feel like um, this song just says, you know, we're all human and we're all just trying to do our best um, and, and to triumph in that, you know, like feel feel like that, that can give you a lift I think you know I think music has a way of doing that so thank you appreciate it James um let's uh let's move on hey Mike it's uh Shaner uh it's been a while Shaner from Toronto mm -hmm, Canada mm -hmm. uh it's been a while since I've talked to you uh I'm gonna try to keep this short because it's a long story I uh, I only have three minutes but uh my son Finley, he's only four years old. Um, love your new album. Um, he's, uh, like I said, he's four years old. He's in JK. Um, so it's Canadian Thanksgiving. Um, my brother in law and his fiance flew down a short flight from northern BCU to Vancouver, flew out to Toronto. They were here for about uh, two weeks. I, the reason why I brought up the podcast at the beginning was because we also listen to your podcast and 
podcast is very important right now because I'm going to bring that up in a minute. Um, anyway, I'm listening. had a lovely time. Uh, they flew back today. They've been traveling all day today, and it's been a long day for us, too, and we had a, a late dinner and stuff like that, so he's been tired, and we just went to put him to bed and stuff like that. So when I do bedtime, like probably three or four times a night, he's... He's always wanted to do his own podcast because Daddy does podcasts once a week. Every Thursday, he knows Daddy does podcasts. So I've been doing a podcast for him. And anyone who wants to watch him, it's available on Instagram. It's uh, Bedtime Stories with a Tired Dad. I believe that's what it is. Uh, anyway, we couldn't get through it. He just kept crying and crying. He's very, very emotional. So finally, we cut it off. And I continued it offline just to send privately to uh, family and stuff like that because he was just so emotional. And he eventually fell asleep in my arms, and I came down, and I put on my music and uh, threw on some MXPS because I've been listening to you guys since I was 17 or 18, and I'm 43 now, and you guys have put me through a lot of good times and bad times. And uh, stay up all night, Iman, and I honestly like kind of just always heard the verse, and I thought it was about more about your your wife and stuff and and i heard it and i thought no wait listen to these lyrics about the backseat driver and the monsters and i've been off my antidepressants for a few weeks now and i feel a lot better shayner again from toronto i'm so sorry i tried to keep that really short three minutes goes by so fast but this is a real quick story i thought it was quick lots to say uh i left off on on your song your song stay up all night i I think that was about your son. I was going to ask about that or one of your kids, um, backseat driver. Um, mm. uh, let us real quick. Uh, also, there's another song about, uh, you know, slamming screen doors. Like, that's my life right now. Uh, your previous albums, early albums, going through high school, that was all there for me. And now seeing you as a dad and married and that, like, that's my life right now. And again, just very emotional. And, uh, he's, he's been very emotional and I have two videos. I wish I could send them to you. They're private. I'm not going to post them publicly, but, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything and, and just keeping me and my family alive. I love you guys so much. And I saw you, you're touring with the Ataris. The Ataris are also one of my favorite bands. You guys are in my top three along with NoFX and closest you're coming is New York City. Uh, it might be worth the seven hour drive or whatever it is, 14, 12 hour drive. Uh, love you guys. Thank you so much. I hope you can clip these two clips together. Love you, Mike. Thank you. Shaner, bye. Shaner, dude, thanks for the story. Um, I know it kind of got messed up in the middle there when you had to like call back. Um, it happens to the best of us. It happens. Um, so let me kind of piece together what you're talking about. You're talking about, you know, you thought, Stay up all night was, you know, about my wife, a relationship thing. Um, and then you kind of realize maybe it's more about my kids. Really, it's not about any one thing. It's stay up all night is about, it's about relationships. It's about, it's about having the most important relationships. And, and when you have that, doing everything you can to continue those relationships and, you know, because we we as humans can just let things go so easily that took years and years to build, you know, and I'm not just relationships, but anything, you know, businesses, uh, a car that we built from scratch and like, let's sell it. Uh, I don't know if that's really a good analogy, to be honest. L let me let me go back a little bit, but stay up all night. You know, it's just I, I feel like the way I write songs is I see flashes of things in my mind and. There's a there's a movie called I think it's called The Tree of Life. Brad Pitt is in it, um, and the director is who's the director Malachi something something Malachi. Anyway, uh, the reason why I mention that film is because it's a film that doesn't have a lot of dialogue. It just has a lot of feelings, like it has a lot of montage scenes that flash through the screen, and you get an idea of what's happening when you see all the things stack up. And I feel like I write not all songs like that, but Stay Up All Night is kind of like that. It's like flashes of scenes. Like 
like you were talking about the screen door uh, from from uh, our last album, Moments Like This. I heard the screen door as it slammed all the hours of the day. That's a montage. That's something that you could put in that Malick film, that The Tree of Life, you know, just a screen door slamming. And, and, and that's what I see, and I write that down. And, and then, you know, so if it's like, as the lights go down around us dancing in the pitch black night, like that's what I see. And so I write it down and, and backseat drive in mind. Like to me, it's just, you know, a backseat driver. I'm not talking about my son. I'm talking about, we all have our own consciousness in the back of our mind, you know, that's talking to us, our, our self-talk, if you will. And people that have self-talk that is negative, that is naggy, that is contrary, that is not supportive to, 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 to us, you know, you know, I think that's what I mean by a self, uh, uh, backseat driver. So when you have a back, backseat driving mind, you have somebody in the back of your mind complaining to you all the time about like, you should have turned that way. Why didn't you go this way? Like, uh, sometimes you just need to like block that out and keep going, keep going and do what you set out to do. And for better or worse, I think that's what the song is. You know, that that's what the song is, is, you know, stay up all night. Don't let go. Keep fighting. That's the song. And I hope people get that. And, and you know, and, and, and honestly, I don't care if, if people get something different from the song and it's a good thing for them. I'm all for that, too. Because when we release these songs, they aren't just our songs. They're, they become, there's a story that gets told by the listener and the community and people that take these songs and, and have their own ideas. And that's fine. I love that. I think that's, that's what it's meant to be. That's what music is, is kind of meant for. So, all right. Um, dude, thank you so much, Shaner. I appreciate it. And, and I love that uh, you have, have these, uh, these memories associated uh, with your family and, and the music and the songs and, it means a lot. It really does. We'll make it out to Toronto at some point. We we really do have plans to come back up to to some uh, Canadian cities. So it's only a matter of time. I appreciate you guys, though. But if you want to come out to New York, that's a, a definite show that's happening. Please. New York City is, is going to be epic. Come out and see us. Um, it's Webster Hall. Great venue. Um, you can't go wrong. So spend a... You know, that's going to be my daughter's birthday. My daughter's going to be there. My whole family's going to be there in New York. Not in Philly, but in New York. So if you want to see them, I shouldn't, I'm just, what am I trying to sell my family? If you want to see them, come to the show. I feel like a creep. Um, I just, all I'm saying is my, my, my train of thought with that was just that it's going to be a really fun night because it's my daughter's birthday. And, and they're going to be able to have a, a great day in New York City. And then the next day when I go to Philly, they're probably going to do something else in New York City. So if you want to come to New York, it's a great weekend for it. Um, all right. That's it. Let's, uh, let's move on. Thanks, Shane. Hey, Mike. What's up? This is Adam from Connecticut. Uh, so my question uh, is about what is probably my all-time favorite MXPX song, The Final Slow Dance. Um, love that song. But uh, every time I listen to it, I find myself wondering two things. First, uh, is there a reason there are no vocal harmonies in it? Uh, was it always like that? Or did you ever try putting in some harmonies and it just didn't work? Um, and the second thing I've always wondered is why you repeated the same lyrics for the second verse. Um, did you ever have a different second verse written, but just didn't feel it worked and decided to repeat the first verse the second time? Um, I don't know if this is a weird question, but uh, again, every time I listen to that song, I, I kind of find myself wondering. I, I try to sing along and add some harmonies to it, but it is a pretty awesome, crazy melody that you have in there. Um, so it, it's kind of hard uh, for me when I've tried to do it, so maybe that's why. But anyways, that's my question. Um Thank you for doing this podcast. I, I think it's so cool that you do this, you know, random ask questions like this. Most bands and artists, um, you know, we'd probably never get to ask questions like this or get answers like this. So super cool that you do this. Thanks, man. Right on, Adam. That's a cool question, actually. And I, I hadn't thought of that really in a long time, but no, those things, um, that's valid for sure because 
we when I remember recording that album, we didn't have a lot of time for backup vocals. We were we spent all our time recording drums, no time on bass, guitar, or vocals really. A lot of time on vocals maybe, but like the lead vocal, um, and and then we even had to finish some of the overdubs. Some of the piano, some of the backup vocals, some of the the gang vocals, a few lead vocals um, were done at A and M Studios. Excuse me, in A and M Studios in Hollywood, so where Jim Henson Studios is now, and or was for a while. I don't know if I think that's gone now too, but um, that spot it's a historic place, soundstage. Um, I think you know somebody said Kubrick filmed some of the moon landing there or something, you know, I don't know. But um, back to the song, though, Final Slow Dance, that's, you're, you hit the nail on the head. There was nothing that really made that better. And so we just left the backup vocals off. And since we had a limited amount of time, it was just like, eh, it's fine. It was a very stripped down record anyway. It was our ACDC record. Um, there wasn't as many drum fills. There wasn't as many guitar riffs and stuff. It was just like everything was very economical and for a purpose. And obviously this the record is like one of our most popular records. So um, people liked that. So, uh, But it was different for us. And, and I think a lot of the reason why we did that is because we were just trying to strip down all the extra messiness and go straight to the core of what we sounded like. And then from there, we kind of built that up again as we went on to the next few albums. But yeah, final slow dance. We um, that was uh, that was a fun song. I always just liked that song. And, and why is there no second verse? I feel like I just wrote that song so quickly. We just never like once you write your main piece of a song, usually it's like, that's it. We're done. Like, and I think that's what happened with, with the final slow dance lyrics is I just wanted to reiterate that first verse, taking up all the space up in my head, you know, like that, taking all the space up in my head. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't remember ever trying to write other lyrics for that. I don't think. <laughs> I'm sure I thought about it at some point, but I don't. I don't remember ever writing a lyric other than what's there. It's kind of weird, but I think that's probably why I did it. I was like, you know what? We can afford to do this every every now and again. You know, you can. When a song is not going to be a hit song or not going to be a single, and not that that really even matters anyway, but I feel like. Oh yeah, you can get away with like having no bridge. You know how like Blink doesn't have real bridges. They have, I mean, they're real, but they're they're not. There's no lyrics. They might like repeat a down, down, down or something like that, but it's usually just an instrumental kind of thing. Something like that. You know, like that's their style, and um, and I feel like in some ways it's similar to that. It's like okay. I can get away with not writing a bridge for every song, right? And I've done that a few times too. Um, Written a bridge, like a non-bridge. But sometimes the the song just calls for that. Like honestly, I think I think we need that. I don't want every song to have a regular bridge. I want some songs to have that instrumental bridge, like the Blink Bridge. And I want song some songs to have just a repeated verse, second verse, same as the first. Judy is a punk. It's like the Ramones. You've heard the Ramones, right? So I grew up listening to the Ramones as I was writing songs, and they did a lot of that. They did, you know, repeating parts, you know. And so I never thought twice about it. You're making me think twice about it, but I'll stand by it. I think on the new album I've written different verses for absolutely everything. Um, You're going to say, no, but excuse my French. No, that's a chorus that repeats. The chorus repeats, and the pre-chorus repeats, but it's just not in the order of a normal song. So it starts with the chorus, goes into the verse, then goes into the pre-chorus, then goes back into the chorus. You got me? All right, cool. So what I call the chorus is, 
Excuse my French, but see you play. I need another. Come what may, you'll be by my side from day to day. Excuse my French, but play. So, uh, excuse my French, but see you play. Je soir du de soir. That one's that's the hardest one for me to say, but je be soir du de soir. De, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, it's so funny that when I when I'm singing that song, I know it pretty pretty well. Like I don't, I'm not ever really thinking I'm going to forget the words to that song but I ha but I but I'm still thinking about it a little extra hard like my my brain is like compressing you know when a computer's working really hard it starts making these noises and the fan comes on like I'm on the verge of that with excuse my french with those those few lines but uh it's more to be honest it's not that I don't remember the words it's I'm trying to pronounce them correctly and I'm trying to get the right the right consonants out in the right order because you can switch them up very easily and then it probably is gibberish. So it's, it's out of respect for the French speaking listeners. Um, yeah. So, uh, I've written second verses for every song on this record. And then of course there's sunrise, which is an instrumental song, no lyrics at all. Like, should I have put lyrics on that? And, and I'd say, I would say most people would say, no, it shouldn't have lyrics. Um, but I, I wonder if anybody would say, yeah, that was lazy. You should have put lyrics here and here. But, of course, if you put lyrics, then the song's going to be longer probably and the song's going to have a different flow and a different vibe. So it's going to change no matter what. It's going to change. So I wonder. I wonder. All right, let's get to – great question, though. Let's get to the next. Yo, Mike, what's going on, brother? Uh, Gene Everett here. It's been a minute since I've called in, a couple years, I think. Um, yeah, I was just rocking the uh, latest podcast. Wanted to just drop a line. And, um, you know, this new album, Can't Wait, this Thursday, maybe by the time you're playing this, it probably mm. was last week or something. <laughs> um, obviously, the song released, Up All Night, sounds great. Uh, there's really an excitement. And obviously, there always is. You know, you're, you've been one of my favorite bands since the 90s. Um, but there's something special about you guys taking us on this ride with the live on the Internet. When everything was locked down and you guys did, you know, a lot of bands did one thing, but you guys topped it. You you did something extra special. No disrespect to any other bands that I might be a fan of who did, like, maybe some one-offs that just, it just wasn't as good. You know, maybe from a club, there was something special. And maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like following social media, you, Tom, and Yuri are closer than you've ever been. And it just adds a... Uh, an extra bit of excitement um, to the hype for the new album. And we just love you guys. And um, thank you for taking us on the ride. I guess I really don't have much else to say. Basically, I'm just pumped. Um, you know, I, I still love playing the self-titled from 2018. And um, you guys are just as good as ever, if not better. And uh, I love it, brother. Take care. Bye-bye. Dude, thanks for calling in, Gene. So pumped to hear it. To hear you uh, say that, man, it's 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 awesome, man. And and this was obviously like he called in right before the album came out, and now we're we're in October, so it's been over a month. And um, I I wonder, I wonder, you know, the excitement's still there. I mean, it, obviously it's died down a little bit, but but like now that we have shows coming and we're going to be in New York and you know we're going to be in a lot of places. We just came back from uh, Indonesia and we we're in Vegas. It, it's just yeah, it feels like. A great time to be part of the MXPX team, to be part of the MXPX family and, and community. And, and so we love you guys, and we we love we love hearing from you. Thanks for calling in, Gene. Um, yeah, the live stream. Just to to put a bow on that, a comment on that. Like, sorry, something got in my eye. Um, the live streams over the pandemic really gave us life. It really like. It, it really helped us stay alive and pay bills, to be honest. We didn't have, you know, a lot of bands had to do unemployment and things like that. And to me, like, I, I wouldn't even know how to go about that because, like, I've always been technically unemployed. I, I'm self-employed. And so when you're self-employed, you're just always on your own. Like, I don't expect any help from anybody, like, no PPP loans or PPE loans or anything. Even if I... Even if somebody wanted to hand me it, I wouldn't take it because, well, we see now uh, a lot of these businesses, one of one, 
so much fraud. And so the government's going to go back after all these fraudsters and they're going to get non-fraudsters in, in the, in the meantime, they're going to get people that maybe I should, maybe you shouldn't have had this money and, and they're going to get scrutinized and they're going to get, we need to look at your books and we need to see this and that. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing, we, we do everything by the book with MXPX with this business thing. Like we pay our taxes. We, we almost, we almost don't deduct enough uh, for taxes so that we pay more taxes so that we can build more credit, things like that. Like we do, we do it above, above board, le- legality wise, ethics wise, morality wise. We try to do everything above board. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, that that's just, it is what it is. And so I feel like over the pandemic, independent people, you know, were squeezed in a way they've never been squeezed before. Um, a lot of people like, unlike me, you know, that go to a job were told, hey, you can't go to your job. And so luckily we were there to, to entertain the people while they were told to stay home. We could be here in our studio jamming out together. And um, it was great. It, it, it really brought us together, like you said, Gene, in a way that I don't know if a, a lot of other things could bring us together because we've lived together, we've toured together, and we've been through so much together. And a lot of other bands have too, yet somehow they don't get along and people break up and this and that. And, and you know, MXPX has had our, our fair share of not getting along, of, me, you know, Tom and I fighting and, you know, whatever. Yuri not being happy with this situation or that. But, like, we've weathered those storms and it's made us stronger. It's made us more understanding of each other. And, you know, Tom and I, like, literally a month ago got in a fight. You know, like, it, it happens. It still happens. But but I love it, and I love... I, I just... I appreciate what we have, and I try to, at least. Because, you know, hearing calls like Eugene, you know, hearing you say, I can really see it. I can really see, like, when you, we're in our live room here, it's not like being in a club. It's not like we're trying to play a, a regular show. Like we're putting on a show for those people literally watching through that camera, uploaded into the internet, into their box, onto their computer, onto their phone, onto their streaming device, whatever it is. We're doing the show for them. That's no. There's no audience here at the studio, although if there is or whatever, sometimes we'll <laughs> kind of mess with them. But uh, I think that's why it worked is because we really weren't trying to – we were really directly trying to connect with people rather than just play a show. Like we were like shows are for connecting. Like when you play in front of an audience, you do connect with them. I think if you do it right, you can connect with them and, um, and it makes it all so much better. So yeah, uh, good times. All right. A couple more. All right. A couple more. What's up, Mike? It's uh Russ Lyman here from Connecticut. Just giving you a buzz. Just got out of work. Had one of those days, frustrated. One of those days. You know what? Let me let me work through, get through the day. I'm sitting in my car now. I'm excited. Going to put on the new MSPX song, sing it all the way home. Uh, Just kind of chill out like that. Enjoy singing to to your music. I was in a band, so I was a guitarist and singer, um, and I enjoy just singing along. Yeah, I think your uh, your tone and key is kind of right where my vocal range is, so it's, it's perfect for me to sing along. I did go last night. I went to an awesome concert. The uh, I think it was called the Wet Hot American Summer Tour. It had uh, the Get Up Kids, Starting Line, New Found Glory, and All American Rejects. You guys would have fit awesome on that bill. But I was singing all night to all the songs out there, and it was a great time last night. And uh, I'm super stoked for the new album, man. I got it pre-ordered. I got the Nebula vinyl coming. I ordered a CD and a T-shirt as well. So I'm stoked. Can't wait to hear the other tracks on the album. Keep up the great work, man. And I uh, hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Hey, Russ. Thanks for calling in, man. So, yeah, so Russ called before the album was out. Again, like I said, we were just purging the last of those. So I appreciate it, and thanks for your patience. It's been a minute. Um, Russ, are you the one that you have sent in your band um, to Music Monday on the podcast? If so, I know exactly who you are. Or you have a podcast about video games. 
I think that's you. Anyway, a lot of people from Connecticut. We got Connecticut on lock. I should do like a live Mike Herrera podcast in Connecticut because it feels like everybody calls from Connecticut. I know the internet can feel off balance sometimes when it's like, oh, everybody hates me. No, it's just like three people on the internet. Everybody else doesn't even care. But uh, love Connecticut. Love you guys up there. Um, man, Wet Hot American Summer Tour. That tour is still going on. I think it's it's not even summer and it's still happening. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen a lot of pictures. Uh, we love all those bands. And uh, yeah, I, I think I think I'm pretty excited for the MXPX Find a Way Home Tour. Um, and someday we will. Someday we'll make it happen. We'll do something with Newfound Glory because. Um, those are some friends of ours, and, and it's just never quite works out. They call us too late or something like that or whatever. But um, it's hard to schedule things, you know, when you're when you've been doing it, even when you've been doing it as long as we have been doing it. It's it's maybe even harder. Um, but thanks for singing along to all the songs for us. I appreciate that. Thanks to everybody. Um, now that the whole album's out, I'd love to hear your take on on it again. So call back in, Russ. Um, all right. Last one, last song, or sorry, last po- last message for this podcast and the last of the pre-album messages, okay? All right, we're getting to it. Here we go. Hi, Mike. This is Josh from Gross again. Wanted to say great job on Stay Up All Night. Uh, awesome tone, guitar tone on that intro riff, verse riff. Sounds great and such a catchy chorus. Awesome. Um, got a couple questions. I've been re- kind of revisiting before I got into skateboarding and punk rock. I was really into basketball and the Supersonics were one of my favorite teams. I don't know why as a kid from Nebraska, I like the Supersonics. I don't remember how. Probably just watching games and liked what they did. So I was curious if the Supersonics were anything for you being from the Seattle area and how you felt when they left. And then my other question. Crap, I can't remember my other question. Oh, yes, I remember my other question. (laughs) I got into The Replacements through watching a documentary in my 30s. So I was wondering if there was any way that you got into a certain band through a just unexpected, weird way. Thanks, Mike. All right, Josh, I like your questions. Uh, and thank you for the kind words about uh, Staple Night. Um, Supersonics, you know, I didn't really get into basketball as a kid. Um, I like to play it, but I didn't get into, like, watching any any basketball when I was a kid. And when I was, I was still in my 20, early 20s, I... Well, real early 20s, 1920, somewhere in there, 2021. I went to a Sonics game with my neighbor, had a great time, loved it. And then shortly after that, they left. And maybe I'm a little off on my years or whatever, but the, the main point is I got into them right before they left. And then they left. And then I was like, all right, well, whatever. I'm not going to pay attention to basketball for a while. But I, I did get into basketball over the pandemic, um, I would say I became a big fan of, and, and of the NBA over the pandemic. I went to, I went to a Spurs game with my buddy. I went to, I didn't go to any other games. I think just that one, uh, we had gone to a Clippers game and sat courtside. This was years ago. Um, and that was fun. So I knew basketball could be fun, but, um, but like, like I said, you know, it's just you don't have a lot of time when you're just I'm constantly just going from one show to the next to the writing songs. And, you know, it's just a 24 hour job to do it, to do MXPX and to do music and all this entertainment stuff. Um, but, yeah, basketball is fun. And, and so, like I said, when when I had a little bit more time during the pandemic, not traveling as much, I got to actually like see the playoffs and see these games over and over and over. And it was really, really fun to watch. I enjoyed it. I thought, you know, I, I, you know, Miami heat, uh, what Denver, Denver, uh, 
Mavericks, or is it Dallas Mavericks? Sorry, Dallas Mavericks, Denver Nuggets. Um, you know, all those those series and stuff I was I was watching over the last few years. But yeah, Lakers. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess you know, over the years. I've kind of I've watched I've kind of gone on little mini streaks, but really what I grew up watching was Seattle Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks, um, they're they're the same age as me. They they started in 1976, and so I feel like I have a kind of a kinship to them, um, and they're my team. So win or lose, they're always going to be my team. I'm not always paying 100 percent attention to the games. You know if they if they kind of start losing a lot i definitely get busy but uh like i said i'm, I'm always gonna be a fan so um now your next question is interesting you discovered the replacements from a documentary in your 30s and is there anything i discovered in a weird way kind of later in life that i really enjoy now i um, trying to think trying to think um yes yes i discovered it's not like I discovered H2O, but I started actually listening to H2O really the last, this, this year, this year. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say this year I started listening to H2O way more than I ever did before. I had only heard a few songs here and there before. I had heard, you know, clips of songs, seen clips. But I actually started listening to like full albums of H2O. And it's it's the type of music I really like. I mean, it's like it's not that much different than MXPX. It's got a different vibe to it, but but it's not that much different. And so, I I enjoyed discovering that, uh, discovering that I didn't ever really give them the time when really I should have. And, and I really love H two O. So one of my favorite old bands that I discovered recently. Um, another one I I you know Hatebreed. Hatebreed's another one that I discovered because we were playing with them at, at Furnace Fest and they were <laughs> they were uh on the bill right under us and I thought that was just so great. And so I just started listening to them. I started checking out, you know, and and now is the time for me to rise to my feet. Wipe the tears from my eyes, wipe the wipe the spit from my face, wipe these tears from my eyes. Something like that, right? Anyway. I enjoyed it. So hate breed H2O definitely being the main one. Um, something different though. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's other things. Um, I'm not, I'm really not out there trying to find new music. And if, if I find something I really like, it's usually a song or something, but um, nothing too crazy recently. Uh, let me look just in case, just in case I'm forgetting something. Um, uh well let's see rich oliver anthony music that song richmond north of richmond great song so catchy really love what he's saying uh that song is huge so if you don't know it then you know kind of crazy that you haven't heard it but uh but it's also maybe a good thing because it'll get in your head you don't want that right <laughs> you'll be like trying to sleep um you know the the new post Malone I've only listened to like one song, uh, I, I can't judge it because I, I gotta spend more time with it. The new Pierce the Veil Jaws Alive pretty good I'd say they, they did a great song they really kind of reinvented themselves a little bit. Um, lately been listening to Lagwagon uh, Haas great album it's from 1995 they really were pioneers in that sound. Um, H2O Go kind of an uh, I don't know it's a a good record but it's not definitely i don't think it's their most popular record but it's got some good songs on it um yeah going back i'm seeing hate breed songs i'm seeing uh vulgar machine seeing <laughs> all roy says i'm seeing hate breed i'm seeing mercy music yeah i'm seeing strung out uh another day in paradise i put that on the other day just to like just to check it out because that was a, that was an album that they were touring on the first time I saw Lagwagon and Strung Out play at at the at the Velvet Elvis in Seattle, Washington, and 
this is the sh- this is the same day that I got my very first Poconacci Punk tattoo. My Poconacci Punk tattoo, which is right there, actually. I was, um, and I went to the show, had a jacket on, and I was in the pit being rubbed and, and being hit. And at the by the end of the night, my sh- my arm was just on fire. My tattoo was just like <laughs> it was fine. It turned out fine, but but uh, I'll never forget that. Another great song, by the way, is Zach Brown Band, You Get What You Give. That song, is that the song? That's the, No, it's called Knee Deep. It's called Knee Deep. So when, when Jimmy Buffett passed away last month, um, there was a bunch of Jimmy Buffett songs going around, and, and this is one that my wife found. And when I heard the song, I was just like, that's such a good song. Let me just play it for you for a second. All right, we're going to get flagged, but it's the, it's, you got to hear the, you got to hear the, um, you got to hear the singing. Here we go. Hey. Gonna put the world away for a minute. Pretend I don't live in it. Sunshine gonna wash my blues away. Has we love, but I lost it. Yeah, it's it's just it's one of those like okay, I'm on the island, I'm on the beach. It's Jimmy Buffett. It's Jimmy Buffett, uh, Zach Brown Band featuring Jimmy Buffett. So I'm not even a Jack Brown Band fan. Like I definitely have heard of him and heard a couple songs, but like, dang, everything he does is so good. I, I guess I am a fan of Zach Brown Band. I just don't know a lot of his music, but uh, I appreciate and I, and I respect. Musicians out there, people out, artists out there, just doing great work, and and this is great. The song's called "Knee Deep in the Water," or or just "Knee Deep," but uh, it's a it's like a real like bluegrass style kind of just acoustic jam, you know, something that Jimmy Buffett you'd hear Jimmy Buffett doing. Ah, rest in peace, Jimmy, eating that cheeseburger in paradise. All right, you guys. Hey, I don't know what's to come. I know Goldfinger's got some shows coming up in November and things like that. But then, uh, and then we're going to be heading into the end of 2023. Um, what? Christmas, all that. Whoa, Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, it's happening. It's all happening. Once, once Thanksgiving's done, it's all holiday cheer and craziness and. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for um, all you do uh, in supporting and listening and and sharing the music and and letting people know about MXPX shows and and all of that. It really does mean the world to me. So shout out to you guys. Shout out to Bob McKnight for producing and editing the podcast. He is a football coach and he's undefeated. So cheers to you and congratulations to you and your team. Um, I hope it, by the time this thing airs, he's still undefeated, but Hey, no matter what, you're doing a great job, my friend. And the fact that he still does this podcast for me, um, on top of all the things that he's got to do for his work and his family, that, that means a lot to me. So, uh, thanks for your time, Bob and shout out to Bob. Make sure if you're on the, my career podcast, Facebook, Facebook group, you say hi to Bob when you see him, uh, comment like his things, all that. And if you want to submit your band, submit a YouTube link of the song to uh, the podcast group, and we'll add that to the list, and we will get an episode out uh, when we get enough, a uh, decent amount. All right, you guys, that's it. That's it. I'll see you soon, I hope. Find us. Get tickets to the MXPX shows. We love you. All right, peace. <laughs>